Joining us now is the CEO of DraftKings, Jason Robbins. Jason, welcome. Good to have you with us. Thanks for having me. So you guys have long said that what your business is is not gambling. It's a game of skill as opposed to a game of chance. But you are very, very ready and delighted, I believe, that now you're going to be able to transform and fully concede that what you have been providing is, in fact, partly at least a game of chance. You're happy about this, right? Uh, yeah, although I wouldn't quite put it that way. I think what we've been providing stays the same, um, but we're very excited to be able to offer this new product, which uh, I think will be regulated differently than how fantasy sports has been regulated. Will what? you will you uh, urge through lobbyists or through your own efforts uh, to allow people to wager online, which is how they play DraftKings generally, as opposed to having to go to a point of purchase, a casino, a racetrack? Well, I think that's what most people will want. Certainly, uh, there may be some that don't, but it's really kind of a ridiculous notion to think that a product that, uh, you know, people are currently partaking in online through illegal offshore black market uh, websites and mobile apps, that you're going to eradicate that by only allowing it in certain offline places. Uh, people who are betting online will continue to do so. So I think the real goal of this is to take something that's an unregulated black market activity and bring it into the light and you have to have mobile and online to do that the right way and um, I also think that that's what the consumer wants people want to be able to access what they want from the internet and from their mobile phones now you see that in virtually every industry in the world and this will be no different and Jason what are you going to offer now or what's different today for you and your company as a result of the Supreme Court decision well, for us, this has really been something we started working on back in uh, the summer of 2017 when the Supreme Court first announced that they were taking up this case. We said this is too big an opportunity and too important to not be ready. So we've been getting ready for almost a year now. We have a product we've built. We're in conversations to get that. Yeah, product. I guess what I'm trying to get at, that new product is different than what you had before. How? Oh, yeah. Well, it's a sports betting product. So the traditional fantasy games we offer are just fantasy sports. You can go and you can play against your friends or against public leagues and you choose teams of players and we love that product and we'll continue to invest in it but we were never able to let people just say hey I want to pick who's going to win the game tonight or I want to be able to bet on whether the points will go over or below a certain total and now we can do those things in states that allow it. So how do you now look at the competition now that uh, the Supreme Court has ruled and, and there's some regulatory uncertainty out of the way? I mean, MJ, MGM has said in past meetings that it looks at it as a potential $5 billion opportunity. They have uh, operational experience in operating a sports book. So do you see those sort of um, the analog players now being competitive in this digital marketplace? Oh, absolutely. I mean, this is going to be a huge industry and there will be lots of competition, which is great for consumers. You know, we feel like we have great DNA being a mobile and online first company. We only started six years ago, so pretty much from day one, it's been all about mobile, all about online for us. And we also have a huge customer base and brand that's very much thought of a, a brand that, you know, people think about when they think about winning money on sporting events. So we think that we have some advantages, but there will be lots of competition and we respect all of them. And it's going to be a, a great thing for customers because they're going to have lots of different options. and. You know, competition just drives innovation, so we're looking forward to being a part of that. Jason, you guys spent a lot of money lobbying state by state a couple of years ago to get the daily fantasy rules through. Are you going to have to spend a lot of money now lobbying state by state to get gambling rules in place that favor your company and maybe not necessarily favor higher tax rates? The NBA want, wants a commission or casinos that want to make sure people go to brick and mortar. Well, I think the most important thing is to get the right regulatory frameworks in place that allow for all the key stakeholders to benefit, but also allow for a robust and competitive market. And I think what you you know we saw in fantasy sports is that 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 process very much uh, the, the process that we went through with the lobbyists and regulators very much led to that. So I'm hopeful you'll see the same thing here. I absolutely understand why the sports leagues feel they should get something. It's their product. I also understand the states need taxes and. Good news is there should be a lot of revenue generated from this industry. So I think there'll be enough to go around and just got to make sure that the rules that are put in place allow for innovation and competition. That's the key. As long as that's the case, I don't mind if we have to share a little bit of it with some others. Are you ready for an IPO now, Jason? <laughs> I mean, now that the Supreme Court has ruled, right? I mean, the gate is open. An early stage investor said just in April, uh, Jeff Bagnon, that you will see DraftKings as a publicly traded company. Is that the message that you are sending out? Is that just something that he said off the cuff? 
Well, Jeff's a great guy, and he knows our company well. So, you know, he's right that at some point our plans are to be a public company. I'm not sure that that's going to be the next step for us. We have a lot of work to do to make sure that, you know, as a, uh, you know, as a company, we're focused on uh, opening up this new market and building the right product and marketing it to consumers. Um, but at some point, I do think a public offering will be in our future. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.